Welcome back to the channel, folks. If you are new here, I am just a dude who likes to do makeup. I do identify as a guy, but I am definitely, you know, very queer, very gay. <laughs> and I uh, don't really conform to gender norms, as you can see. Um, but I do identify as a man very much. Today's video is going to be very different from things that I normally will do here on YouTube. Today's video is not about the makeup. I am wearing makeup, but I'm not going to be talking about the makeup. Um, I'm not even going to tell you what I'm wearing today, just because I don't want this to be like, you know, the whole like capitalist thing. Like, we're not here to discuss that. Maybe I'll tell you uh, in my next video what I wore in this one, uh, if I remember. But um, yeah, not the point. Today's video is definitely going to be very different because I want to talk about something that I just feel like I need to kind of address because uh, Pride Month is almost over and I haven't done anything for it. And um, I don't know if anyone like is wondering why I haven't or if no one really cares, but I just thought I would address it. I mean, I will say, first of all, what I'm about to talk about isn't the reason why I have done nothing for Pride Month. It's just I don't prioritize or I haven't prioritized Pride Month over all the other things that I've been wanting to do this month. I just moved my Gengar because you couldn't really see him back there in the dark. He matches my hat, so I thought I would move him. So before we get into this thing, I do just want to give a few disclaimers. Um, this is completely my own personal thing. I am not trying to tell anybody else that they shouldn't be enjoying Pride Month however, you know, you do. Um, it, this is just my own experience and why I don't really enjoy Pride Month personally, myself. And I'm kind of wondering if maybe there are other people out there who feel the way that I do. Uh, if so, you know, let me know. Um, but if you don't feel this way, please don't get angry and talk smack in the comments because I don't need that. <laughs> I'm already feeling a little... I don't know, not great. So first off, I wanna say, you know, the past few years, every time Pride Month comes around, I will talk to my husband about um, like, oh, do you wanna do anything this year? Do you wanna like try to go to an event and whatever? And we never end up planning anything. We never end up setting anything up. And prior to being married, I really didn't even have someone that I could go to these events with and I didn't feel comfortable going alone. So I've really never actually been to any Pride events. Oh, hey, I was just editing and I realized that that's not completely true. I did go to, um, well, I have been to a few small Pride events um, at a local orchard uh, with my husband and um, with friends. So that was fun, but it's kind of a different vibe. Um, specifically in this video, talking more about like big pride, uh, like parades and things. So just wanted to clarify that. And part of the problem is I, I really don't have gay friends. I don't necessarily feel particularly comfortable around other gay people as it turns out, like not like, I'm not saying like, ooh, internalized homophobia, like that's not what it is, I promise. I just don't get along with other gay men. I, in all of my experiences, and maybe it's just because the way that I was meeting gay men most of the time was through like Grindr or whatever the hell and never through organic situations, although even in the few instances where I did, I still felt, I've always felt very kind of judged by other gay men. Like, gay men can be rather catty towards one another and very, you know, they kind of size you up and will pick out things about you that they don't like. And, uh, I don't know, I've always just had a really hard time with other gay men, and being that I, honestly, I have a lot of, like, fear of missing out, I was an outcast growing up, and, you know, it affects me more. I'm a little, you know, traumatized from being treated poorly by kids in school and stuff, and being rejected, and I always wanted to feel like a part of 
a community and, you know, like a friend group. I've had issues with my family being very conservative and I've just always struggled with not really having that sense of fitting anywhere, literally anywhere. And the thing that sucks is I thought when I was younger that I would fit with other gay guys and that the gay community would be a place for me to fit in. Um, I didn't fit in with other guys at school. I've always, always wanted guy friends. I've wanted to get along with guys like I am a man. And it's not even just like, oh, I think guys are hot, like whatever. <laughs> that is what it is, but I wanted other male companions just to be my friends. Like, it didn't, it, I would have been perfectly happy with, you know, completely non-sexual relationships with men. Um, I always wanted that, but I never really got it. And even when I did, like in high school, I did have some male friends, but um, I don't know, it was, it was always weird. High school was super weird. I don't want to start ranting and raving about high school. I could talk about that forever, but I've always felt with other guys that there is some kind of wall there, like something that gets in the way. I don't want to talk about this for too long, but basically I have always felt like I wanted that sense of community and I always thought that the gay community would be that for me. But then I started meeting other gay guys, and the fact of the matter is, I don't really get along with gay men. It's really strange because you would think that I would, right? But like I said, I, I do feel very judged. Um, I feel like I'm not attractive enough, you know, not fit enough. Uh, I don't behave in a way that I don't know, is expected of me. I don't fall into a particular stereotype, which I feel like is kind of necessary to fit into the gay community. I, you know, comment if you think that that's not true, but in all of my experiences, other gay guys have always kind of wanted to classify me and they classify themselves. It's like, are you a bear? Are you a, an otter? Are you a twink? Are you a them? Are you mask? Are you top, bottom, whatever the hell? And it's, it's all about like these categories. It's always frustrated me because I never fit in any kind of box. I've never been, I mean, to this day, like, what am I really? I've had gay men kind of shame me for not being masculine enough. I've had gay men make me feel like, uh, I need to embrace my feminine side more, like, and that made me feel bad because I remember trying to explain to guys, like, I don't want to be very feminine, right? At the time, when I was younger, I was scared. Like, I was afraid to be overtly feminine. There are things about me, this... In case you're new, this makeup thing is brand new for me. I started in 2021, I'm 30 years old, like this is almost 31 years old. This is new that I feel comfortable enough to do this. And you know, to me, this is almost like an F you to the world that I do things like this at this point because I just don't care anymore. Like fight me, like I'm ready. <laughs> but growing up, I was afraid because I didn't fit in, because I didn't have a group, I felt you know, being obviously gay, which I am. The, my mannerisms, the way that I speak, all of this stuff, I'm very obviously gay and I can't change it even though I have tried. I've made conscious efforts at times to try to curb certain things, but like I am who I am and I'm obvious and everybody knows that I'm gay and there's nothing that I can do about it. And so that made me feel very vulnerable and it made me feel like an outcast and it made me feel like I was in danger in some capacity. I, I don't remember ever really being like, oh my God, am I gonna get beaten up right now? But, you know, being on the outside, being obviously different, 
puts you in a dangerous position in this world, unfortunately. I feel differently about this now, because, I mean, look at me, I'm ready to go. <laughs> but back then, when I was young, that was scary. That was a scary prospect. And even, you know, putting aside the fear of missing out, putting aside the desperation to fit you know, in with someone, putting aside any kind of fear of violence or mistreatment. Like, of course, there was the fear of rejection, but there was also, I, I, I really hate being stereotyped. I absolutely hate it. I've felt it my whole life. People have stereotyped me. And I feel like people make assumptions about me. People assume that, you know, they, they see me and I'm, I'm very gay and whatever. And so they assume that I have watched Drag Race, which I have not. I do love Trixie and Katia, but I watch them on YouTube. Like I don't, I've never seen Drag Race. Um, they think that, you know, I probably like maybe Madonna or Lady Gaga or Lana Del Rey or whoever the hell um, is considered like a gay icon, Britney Spears. And I, I do like Lady Gaga. I haven't been into her in a very long time, but I did, like her at one point. I also did listen to some Lana Del Rey. I have uh, her first two albums or something like that, but at this point, I don't really listen to her stuff that much anymore, um, if really ever. But, I, you know, people will assume that you're like a total stan for these people. I've never liked Britney Spears. I've never really liked Madonna. Like, I gave her a try, but it was kind of like, all right, whatever, this is <laughs> whatever. I hate when people assume those things, you know? People assume that I dream to be a hairdresser or like a makeup artist, which at this point, maybe, but <laughs> when I was younger, no, definitely not. Like I, I didn't want this at all. Um, people change over time, people change as they grow up. But when I was young, this wasn't even on my radar. Like I was not, I was not this guy, um, but people, People assume that, I don't know, people just assume, they assume that I like musicals. <laughs> like, you know, there's all of these things that come with being obviously gay that people just kind of put you in that box and expect that of you. And most of it has never been me, like at all. And that kind of sucks. Where am I going with this? This all ties into the whole not feeling like I fit in thing and as much as I always felt like I didn't get along so well with straight guys I realized I didn't get along that well with gay guys either I didn't have that much in common with a lot of these guys and it's a lonely feeling feeling like you don't even fit in the community that you always kind of hoped you would fit in especially after years of wanting to fit in somewhere so why do I not participate in Pride stuff? It makes me feel lonely. It makes me feel left out. Obviously, staying back and not participating makes that feel worse. I see all this stuff that people are doing and it looks like fun and, it, you know, and that makes me feel like crap. But I feel like if I went, I wouldn't feel like a part of it. I would still feel like I was looking at it from the outside. Not having gay friends makes me feel alienated. It makes me feel alienated from the community. It makes me feel separate. I also want to address something else that might be kind of controversial, but it is something that I personally have an issue with, and that is just the general over-sexualization of all queer things. And I know that I'm not alone in this because I've seen other people on the internet talk about this. I have seen on Tumblr uh, discourse about this. Like, this is something that people discuss. There is too much sexualization in media of queer people. You know, I fully understand that what we have in common is our sexuality, but that doesn't mean that that's everything. That doesn't mean that that should be at the forefront of everything to the point where people are going to pride parades wearing, you know, 
weird kinky outfits like I've seen pictures and things from pride events that are like people wore that like in public people did those things in public people do things <laughs> at these at these events that no one should be doing out in the open and this is not you know I'm not saying that this is happening all the time um, but I have seen these things on the internet just to be perfectly clear, I've seen them on the internet. I'm not saying that any local events that I could go to would have these things, but it, it all feels connected, you know, like it, these are pride celebrations. This is all, you know, it's all the same celebration. And it's like, even if I don't see that at a pride event near me, just the fact that I know that that's something that happens kind of taints the whole sort of ritual for me. Maybe that's stupid. Maybe I shouldn't think that way. I mean, I get it if you feel that way, but I don't know. I just do. I really don't like the way that our culture, our, the, the gay culture, over-sexualizes. The way that I see young men objectified, uh, you know, it's so normalized to objectify attra attractive young men in the gay community. Um, you know, the whole idea of like, go-go boys and, you know, dancers, strippers, people that do other kinds of sex work beyond that. Uh, it's so normalized and so, I don't know, like I could talk about this particular subject for a really long time, like I could make a whole video about it, but I don't really want to get into it too much here, but it's something that makes me very uncomfortable. If you're happy doing those things, that's fine, do your thing, but this is something that I know I can clash with other gay men about, because when this subject has come up, when I've talked to other gay men, they get a little, they, they Guys have gotten upset with me like I'm too uptight and it's like, you're missing the point. Like, I just don't like to see my brothers objectified and sexualized and dehumanized. I'm very protective of younger men. I'm very paternal towards younger men, just inherently. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but I am. I'm just very, I get very mushy. For younger guys, I get very protective, I get very fatherly, and uh, I don't know, I just feel really bothered by seeing young men treated like, I don't know, sexual conquests? Like, I don't like that. There is so much fetishization uh, of age gaps in the gay community and, you know, other things and I don't know I really don't like it and these are things that people will celebrate alongside gay pride and it's like I is 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 a is a pride parade the place to be celebrating these things I just personally don't like the idea of people going to these things in like a jock strap and a leather harness with like a dog collar and a leash crawling on the floor uh with like some kids there like even with me there like <laughs> a public space is not a place for you to practice your kinks and express your kinks in front of a non-consenting audience you know, like you can dress like a Tom of Finland character. That's his name, right? Tom of Finland? You can dress like, you know, a leather cop or biker or whatever and be a little more dignified about it. And like, that's fine. Represent if that's your thing. But don't, it, in my opinion, and I'm not alone in this, I don't think that it's appropriate to be going in full on like bedroom gear and acting out these things in a public place. Again, I'm not saying that these are things that 
happen everywhere. I don't know if it would be something that I would see if I went to a, a Pride event, but these are things that I don't want to be around. And so it deters me, you know? I also really don't like the fetishization of um, heterosexuality in the gay community. Wow, what a big fetish that is. Like, people love the idea of straight guys. And that is so freaking inappropriate and just not good. What is so great about trying to get someone who doesn't want you to do things with you? That's messed up. See a therapist. <laughs> and guys who are not straight will call themselves straight if they are, you know, masculine, but, and maybe bisexual. Uh, and I don't know, it's such a stupid thing. And it's like, just say that you're gay. Like if you're doing things with other men, you're gay. Like don't say straight because that's, again, this is a whole other thing that I could talk about in a whole other video, but I just personally think that that's a really messed up thing. And I don't want to be around that kind of stuff either and I know that that kind of stuff exists and I know that that's the kind of stuff that might pop up at a pride event. I knew someone who actually went to a pride event and left with a shirt, a straight guy, I think. He says he's straight, <laughs> last I heard, but he left with a shirt that said, I'm not gay, but a 20's a 20, like, what the hell? <laughs> In conclusion, <laughs> I really hope that I haven't rambled on and on for too long and made this, um, I don't know, confusing. <laughs> I hope that I made my points clear and I, I again just want to say this is just me explaining why I don't make a big deal out of Pride, why I haven't done a Pride look, um, why I have not gone to any Pride events, and why honestly this time of year makes me feel depressed. And uh, I have been depressed. <laughs> this year in particular, I have really just tried to ignore it and just can't wait for the month to be over, which sucks. I want to be able to feel celebrated and accepted during Pride Month, but I don't. I, I feel like an outsider and I feel really crappy. So that is why I wanted to talk about it. Um, if you're out there and you feel the same way, let me know. Uh, if you think that it's stupid of me to feel this way, I mean, don't be mean in the comments or anything, but maybe, maybe my preconceptions are ridiculous. Maybe I would feel more comfortable, but I don't know. I just, there's a lot of things that I feel very sensitive to and Pride Month just kind of brings those things out, you know? Gosh, I hope that I said everything that I wanted to say. I'm like sitting here now thinking about this and I'm like, did I do it? Did I say everything? Did I make myself clear? I don't know. I hope that you are enjoying Pride Month. If you aren't, I hope that, you know, you're not sad and feeling left out. I hope that you at least enjoyed and got something out of this and if, you didn't know these things about me, now you do. Uh, I'm sure most people didn't. In fact, I'm pretty sure pretty much everyone didn't because I don't talk about these things. Just a little bit with my husband, but... And by the way, my husband... Wedding ring. <laughs> um, my husband is wonderful and he's my best gay friend. The best gay friend that I could have. He's actually bi, but... You know what I mean. My best queer friend. I do have a couple of female queer friends, um, just by the way, but uh, I don't know. It's a little different. I know that that probably sounds stupid, but it's a, it's a little different. And gosh, this is, I really hope that you understand where I'm coming from because it's so hard to explain in a short amount of time all of the things that I feel. But I'm going to wrap this up before I end up rambling on any further. Oh, I did just want to say that 
about my husband. Um, he is, he heals me, you know, when I feel left out and when I feel like I don't fit anywhere. Uh, I know that I fit with him, which is wonderful. So I guess I'll leave you on that happy note. <laughs> Gosh, I have to edit this video now. That's going to suck. So I will be seeing you guys again on Sunday with a more happy, upbeat video. Uh, so tune in then. And until then, I hope that you have a great week. Peace.